بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين الى يوم الدين اما بعد اذلك ومن يعظم شعائر الله فانها من تقوى القلوب if on us the symbols of Allah respects the signs of Allah that is an indication of taqwa in the hearts so who am i am i worthy of this great and noble acceptance from Allah rabbul alamin an invitation to the house of Allah an invitation to meet my nabi so when you go into a great place the greater the place the more the etiquettes somebody is visiting a doctor so in the surgery there is adab, there is etiquette, there is an appointment, there is a time you need to be, there is a place you need to be, etc, etc. So each place has adab. You're going to meet the minister, there is adab. You're going to meet the president, there is adab. You're going to meet the king in the castle, there is adab. So in everyday life there are adab and etiquettes which are very important in a person who contravenes these etiquettes will be deprived so a person had a need they went to the doctor they didn't stick to the etiquettes the doctor throws them out they will lose out so based on the greatness of the person you meet in will be the deprivation also greater So we have to understand that I'm going to these Mubarak places. This is of the highest standard, this is of the highest caliber, the highest level. So a, a person has to be very particular if he really understands the value of these places. Otherwise, if a person doesn't really have value of the king or the court or the castle, then he won't follow any of the etiquettes. He will, he will dishonor the king, he will dishonor the palace, he will dishonor everybody else and eventually he will be dishonored. So the greatness of these places, a person was in Medina al Munawwarawat, Aji Bai Padia Rahmatullah Alayhi and the heat was intense. So he started complaining to Aji Saab about this year. So Aji Bai Padia Rahmatullah Alayhi replied, how fortunate are we to breathe the air which Nabi salam breathed? Every breath that he took, he breathed this air at this temperature. So every breath that you are taking, you're supposed to be enjoying it, not complaining. So where our vision is, where our problems are and, and where our gaze should be. A person is going to these places, when you look at Mount Uhud, it's the same gaze of Nabi salam which fell on Uhud. When you're walking on the gullies of Medina, then it's the same gullies where Nabi salam, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Talha, Zubair's footsteps fell. Masjid al-Nabawi, the ground where I am reading Salah, my Nabi read Salah, yeah. Sahaba read Salah, yeah. Jamaats were dispatched from here, delegations came here. So we need to go back 1400 years to understand the paramount value of these places. Otherwise a person will be in darkness, such a darkness that he won't even know. He will presume, I'm going there, I did my hajj, I came back, my hajj is over. With. Not a ritual. So a person is, 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 is in so much darkness, he doesn't even realize it. A, a opportunity of a lifetime, I don't know, I will be given tawfiq again to come back. 
So every time a person goes to these Mubarak places, whether it's a Hajj, whether it's a Umrah, I need to do it properly. There's no room for taking chances. It's not a holiday, it's not a vacation, it's not because I, I, I had extra money and I'm going there. Some people get inheritance, they got extra money, okay, let's go there, Mubarak places. Yes, go, but do a good job of it. Two drug drivers came to a low bridge, so there was a board, a sign for the clearance, 10 foot 8 inches. So they'll be sure they got out, measure the truck, and they realized the vehicle was 11 foot, it was much higher than the bridge. So the one man looked at his friend and said, I looked properly, I can't see any cops. I cannot see any cops. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. So that rule won't work. If you go for it, you're gone. So uh, let's go for it. Finish the Torah, finish the Umrah, finish the Hajj, finish it. Go for it, no problem. But what's the damages? What's the casualties? What's the consequences? A person is in a darkness, he doesn't even realize how much darkness he in. So, uh, a person shouldn't be unaware of the adab, the etiquettes of these places. Likewise, to, to, to learn the Masail, likewise, to make sure when a person is accepted to go to these Mubarak places, then he starts learning the Dwas, which is very good. He starts learning to the Masai, which is very good. He goes for classes, etc. But his focus and his concentration is uh, on the Vairi Hajj. So the Ruhani aspect and the spiritual aspect of that no effort is made in that direction. So a lot of effort needs to be made. From the time I know, one is for the Amal itself, but now immediately, what effort needs to be made? There was a, 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 a wife who decided that she's going to take her husband out for a meal to a restaurant. So he wasn't uh, used to eating out, he never was in the habit of ever going out. So he didn't know anything about ordering, how the menu works, etc, etc. So when they got there, he was a bit confused. So the wife, just to make him more comfortable, said that, why don't you have what I choose? Why don't you have what I choose? So he replied, what, and leave you hungry? No, I couldn't do that. Why? Don't you have what I choose? So what purpose she, she brought him here for, what she intended and what is the end result was two opposites. So what purpose I'm going for, what am I supposed to achieve, the end game, it's, it's two different things. So uh, a person who realizes his object and knows his maqsad and, and identifies his purpose, then immediately he'll be taking stock of himself. He will have value of these Mubarak places. Daily his time for Tilawat, Quran already, he'll be making an increase in. Dua, if I'm making five minutes a day Dua, I need to increase to 10, 15, 20, one hour. Dhikr, what adhkar am I making? Morning and evening adhkar. Nawafil, am I particular about Ishraq, Chast, Awabin, Tahajjud? Am I particular about the Masjid? When the Adhan goes, I'm in the Masjid. I'm there takbir ula I'm there safi ula So what engagements am I currently engaged in that has taken me away from my priorities and my objective? In the world, if it's a king, if it's a royalty, if it's the president, if it's a celebrity, and somebody does get a chance to meet them, their whole life they'll never forget that moment. They will boast about it. 
on this date, at this time, I can remember clearly, I met the president of this country, uh, and this was the whole story. So just meeting them and a person gets ecstatic, it's a memorable experience. Some other people are more advanced, they've got inside contact, so they need to meet the president, they can meet him. Buzruk, so after much difficulty, you manage to make salam with the Buzruk. I am at this Buzruk here. We'll remember it our whole life and we'll tell everybody about the circumstances behind it. You know the Khadim of the Buzruk, now you can get to the Buzruk. But in all these scenarios, you know the senior. The senior doesn't know you. So Kamal is not you knowing a senior. Kamal is a senior knowing you. And then knowing you is also for what? One is a senior has some work. So he meets the minister because he needs to get work out of the minister. He meets somebody because he needs work out of them. But there's some people who he wants to meet because he loves their company. So some people got no taluk at the masjid because they got no taluk at Allah. They got no taluk at the musalla. So they got no taluk at Allah. Somebody else comes to the masjid, but just for salah, they're there last and out first. They also got a, a, a very light connection, really fragmented connection. But there are those who are early in the masjid, even before the adhan, after salah, they still want to stay in the masjid. It's not that they want to stay in the masjid. Allah wants them to spend time. Allah wants to spend more time with them. Allah gives them tawfiq to spend more time in His house. When you love somebody, you want them to stay longer. Time to go, no, 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 no. Just, just stay longer, but more. So these are great places. And he who pays respect to the greatest, paves respect for his greatness. You respect the great, you will become great. So we shouldn't take for granted what Allah has granted us before the granted disappears. Failure to fulfill the adab of these places will be a means of being deprived. See Ramadan is such a great month Nabi alayhi salam made dua, Balighna Ramadhan. Ulema have made some kalam and discussed this narration, but just for us to understand. Wa Balighna Ramadhan. So Allah, let me reach Ramadhan. I want to see Ramadhan because it's an opportunity. Ramadhan is a great month. I cannot be deprived of this greatness. And even before that, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban. Oh Allah, put barakat in my time, barakat in my amal, barakat so that I can do those amal to maximize on Ramadan. So the amal starts before the occasion. So Deen is building us, a person came in Rajab and Shaban, he is engaged in Ibadat, he is engaged in amal. Then Ramadan comes, he goes to a uh, climax. Then the last 10 days of Ramadan is on a super climax. He's reached the apex, the pinnacle of success and salvation. And since you've made so much sacrifice for Allah, you'll get a prize, Eid. Then after Ramadan, when a person gets a prize, he wins a certain contest. Let's say he's doing a, 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 a marathon. He doesn't stop, oh, I got the prize, I'm number one ranked in the world. Next year he's at it again. From the time he wins till the next occasion to become first again, he can't rest. So after Eid of Ramadan, the momentum increases because we got a, we got a taste of the love of Allah, we got the taste of Ibadah. Now a person's drive, his, his, his thrust, his momentum is on the next level. As he continues, Shawal Dhul Qa'dah going higher and higher and Dhul Hijjah is the climax and now he's gone to a super super level so he's got a Eid again a gift and in Al-Amalu Bil Khawatim now he ends the year 
of his Islamic calendar in style. And if you ended your year in style, you can end your life in style. When Ramadan arrives, Allahumma sallimni li Ramadan. Wa sallim Ramadan li wa sallimhu li mutaqabbala. The way to provide bin Samit radiyadha'an. Then Ramadan would arrive to read the dua. Wala preserve for me Ramadan. Safeguard Ramadan for me and accept it from me. So, in the worldly terms, a person makes effort, let's say in a certain sport, so locally he is known, then he makes effort provincially, then he makes effort nationally. And this person, to get there, his parents from a very young age groomed him. So how much sacrifice he made, how much pleasures he sacrificed what other normal kids would love. He doesn't love that life. Even though he's on a national level for him to become international, the sacrifice doesn't end. If he thinks so, that uh, once he progresses, he can rest, he's not going to go further. Then internationally he's famous, but he wants to be in part of the Olympics to get qualified how much effort to be in the match, the final showdown for the gold medal, how much more effort, how many diets he's been through, how many sleepless nights, how many mind-breaking moments where he pushed himself beyond the limits. So the one that goal, go, the, achieved the gold, he gave more than everyone else. This is for a small title of dunya where millions and millions of people have dedicated their lives for a small status, for a small medal, for the medal of Akhirah, for the medal of Jannah, for the medal of Jannah al Firdaus, for the medal of salvation from Jahannam, for the medal of Rabbul Alameen, for the medal of the Sahbat of Nabi Alayhi Salam in Anbiya, with the medal of the company of Sahaba. How much more sacrifice we need to make? In one country to make, I'm sure the gold medalists accolades are the highest. They would actually marry in the same field a male and female gold medalist. So they genetically, the offspring would have this, in, this inherent skill. Then from a very young age, obviously the parents are experts, but what training my two-year-old child I need to give that they can become a gold medalist. So terbiya started from the beginning, before inception. What about us for our children before inception? What? What amal need to be done so we get pious offspring? Before marriage, what amal? All of this is not even for the wing of a mosquito. And we, the people of Iman, what are we doing? So we need to take stock of ourselves now. What are those barriers that are stopping me from my Allah? There was a murid who had taken bear to a sheikh and uh, sheikh gave him some amal. And uh, when the maidservant used to bring food, then she would notice him glancing at her. So he fell in love with her and he would have lustful glances. So she uh, reported this to the sheikh. And uh, obviously the sheikh will make tarbiyat. So he gave her instructions. He has a laxative and uh, whatever feces comes, put it in a bucket. So she had acute diarrhea and she would uh, defecate often, her face became pale, her eyes and cheeks sunken, uh, the nur, the light from her face disappeared and she was unattractive and her beauty had vanished. So then the sheikh said, okay, now today when you take the food to him, stand there. 
when the murid looked at her, he was going to look at her with a lustful gaze. He said, just put the food down and he turned away. He felt disgusted. Then the sheikh came and said, oh you, one who seeks the beauties of this world, why do you turn your gaze away from this girl? What is missing from her today that your love has vanished? Then he said, bring those buckets. He showed the murid the feces and said that This is the only thing that left her and means that you fell in love with these feces because since this feces left her, so is a beauty. So beauty is in all in the feces. Now your love is gone. So is that what you were made for? So we also, whether it's dunya, whether it's beauty of this world, what, what love? have we engaged in that we've sacrificed the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So adab and etiquettes, so sacrifice has to be made and the sacrifice starts now, now, not waiting till I leave. There was a king who in those days he should make chal, chal, uh, tarbiyat of the, the, the princess. So um, the, he, the king saw the teacher riding a horse and the prince was walking. So he was upset and furious. So he called the uh, Ustad and said, you know what, uh, how could you do this? You riding on the royal horse and he's walking? He said, Maaf, your majesty, he's going to become the prince. Uh, the prince will become the king. And uh, if he does not travel on foot now, he will not be way on, how people travel on foot. He will not see what's it to be on the ground. He will not see the environment. So when he when he's crowned king, he will recall his past and he will know how to show mercy to others. But you can't do this. I'm the Ustad. I need to do it. I need to implement it. So Mona uh, Qasim Nanot, we had reached such levels that Mona Yaqub used to say that one of the factors where he had reached the sublime degree and was uh, for his respect for his ustads. Once a, a toilet cleaner, Bungi from Tana Bowen came to meet Molana. And when he heard that he was from Tana Bowen, he went out of his way to honor him and respect him. So this was a toilet cleaner, but he showed respect because his sheikh was from Tana Bowen. So that Nisbet in connection now. So Adab in Atticus, was the Mujahid al Fathani, once went into the toilet and he noticed a droplet of ink on the nail of his thumb. So uh, he was troubled and he immediately came out and uh, he said that this droplet had a connection with ilm. The murids noticed him going in and out. I found it disrespectful to take it to the toilet. So, uh, adab and etiquette. Somebody made from Atani a, a leather bag with uh, his name engraved on the Muhammad Ashraf Ali. But Hazrat would treat it with so much respect that he would never put it on the ground or in appropriate places because it had the name Muhammad and it had alphabets of ilm so he had to show adab and etiquettes. So we need to learn adab, the adab and the etiquettes of going to the royal court so that we submit in such a level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us and when Allah is pleased it will be a hajj Mabrur, Maqbul, Insha'Allah. May Allah give us tawfiq of making amal. The need for today is, the amal for today is that when we go for Hajj to, 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 to try to do walking, if a person can manage, they have istidad, um, and uh, obviously you don't just go there and do the walking Hajj, but before that also we need to have some f fitness levels as well. Um, likewise, the elderly, etc. Make mushra with somebody and, and, and if you feel you can manage without the consequences, wherever you make mushra with, 
inna Adam alayhi salam atal bayta alfa atyatin he came to the baytullah a thousand times lam yarkab qattu fihna min al hind ala rijlayhi in a none of these trips did he ever ride on an animal and he was coming all the way from India walking وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين